Okay guys, welcome back and this is going to be the last part and hopefully it's going to be very easy to understand. Now what I do is I jump to my script and now it's time for us to read the values. Now I'm going to divide this tutorial to two parts. The first is how do I read the values? The second is how do I make sense of these values? So how do I read the values? Is First of all, I have to incorporate a library system that's input output and it's going to be the ports this is going to allow me to have a an access to my serial ports so what i do is i'm going to create an instance a serial port instance i'm going to call it stream and it's going to equal a new okay serial port now for most of you guys if you have say for example the com less than 10 or equal to 10 you can literally write it this way and define the speed rate but for some weird reason if your com is greater than 9 in my case it's 11 you have to do something else I have to say adds and then make this thing here slash slash dot slash and then I want to concatenate the string that's how I do it but this is only for those that are greater than 10 10 and less I think you just have to write its the name and this is the default speed, the same thing as we have set. The very first thing that we want to do is that when the game starts, I want to open the port. I want to stream.open. And this is the important part. I want to say stream.reading timeout to 25. If you guys recall, uh, we set the delay in Arduino for 20. Now, like I said, this is from experimental. Uh, I found this is the best, or at least it, it runs smoothly for me. When I set the Arduino for 20 and the Unity for 25. Now, definitely we don't want to set it to not for, forget this part because the Unity would, uh, I think it would freeze. Anyways, um, now what happens on our update? I'm going to check if the stream is open. It is open. What is it that I want to do? Then I want sh to, to try and catch method. I want to try something and catch something else. The reason why I have this is because reading from a serial port can give me a timeout exception. And it, which is, I think it's normal. And but what happens is that I don't want Unity to stop when when this happens. So I just say, you know what, I want you to cache this type of exception, which is system dot exception. I can specify it more and simply just debug. Can I say timeout exception anyways timeout but what is it that I want to try now I want to try first of all I want to read the data that I sent I'm gonna integer data that I did send equals stream dot read L bytes okay reading the bytes uh, and it's going to store it into the data now I have my data now th the question is how do I make sense of my data now let me show you something guys now I don't let's just draw this is the my coordinate system this is the zero now the unity have a minus five and five this is my play field and that's exactly 10 degrees but if you guys recall correctly from Arduino we sent from five the readings are going to be to 25 which is twice that is 20 degrees so somehow I need to fit this guy into this guy right so what I do is the very first thing is I want to take this guy back to zero so I make it minus five so it becomes from zero to 20 and the next thing is that I want to normalize it by normalizing I mean I want to divide by the 20 which is the maximum value so that I would have zero to one where 0 corresponds to 0 and 20 corresponds to 1 and all these guys are in between and now by multiplying it with this degree which is 10 I would end up with 0 to 10 where again 0 is 0 and 10 is going 20 is going to be 10 now what I, what I have left is simply just to shift it I'm gonna say minus 5 minus 5 so I end up with minus 5 and 5 and that's to me how I make sense of the data and make it interesting anyways so back to my script 
So the very first thing that I want to do, however, this is an important part, is that what happens if I was to send you readings that are less than 5? What happens when I, when I send you readings that are more than 25? Basically, I want to clamp it. Equals, like I did before, mathlf.clamp. I'm going to clamp what? The data. And the minimum value is going to be 5 and 25. Okay, now what I need to do with my data, the very first thing I said that I want to minus 5 minus equals 5, so it becomes from 0 to 20, and then I want you to divide it, divide it, where is it, 20, which is the maximum value, and I would have it normalized, this is for normalization, and the next part is that I want to multiply it by 10. Is going to be now again, guys. This this uh, method is sort of like primitive, and it doesn't work for all screen resolutions. Uh, I think I may make a tutorial how to make it work for different resolutions, but it may be a little confusing. So, just for si simplifying things, I made it pick these values, anyways. And now all that I need to have is data mi minus equals five. So, somehow actually not somehow but through this the 5 would equal to minus 5 and 25 would equal to 5 the, the last thing that I want to do is that I want to set my value now one thing that I want you guys to do is to actually forget about everything that we have written here because we're not going to be using this way and instead I'm going to define a vector to this is my temp and it's also going to get my transform dot position but inside of this here, I want the temp.x, because we're manipulating the x-axis only, to be equal to the data that I just received, which is the actual position of the paddle. And finally, once I'm done with the whole thing, I want to set my information transform.position would have to equal to the temp. Okay, hopefully this thing would work. Let me just connect my Arduino. And let's see if it works. Okay, let's play it. Alright, so, okay, so it does not work for some reason. I have to figure out why. Okay, guys, so I did check, and apparently I had two things. First of all, I made the data as an integer, but we need to make it as a float because once I divide it, it's going to give me 0 and 1 and there's not going to be anything in between and the next thing is I changed something in my Arduino code and that is I made print instead of write for debugging so just make sure that you have it as write and this guy as a float and then by playing you should have a fully functional paddle see this is I know you guys can see it but that's how it's going to work and I think it's very interesting and I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and learn something new and if you guys want me to continue with this paddle game which is the block breaker let me know thank you